what's up you guys? Hey, thanks for uh, watching this video. And in this video, I want to tell you about my Caribbean medical school experience. So a lot of people ask me, you know, what is the best uh, Caribbean medical school to go to if you want to get back into the United States and you, you want to get a residency in the United States. I did that myself. I went to a Caribbean school. I went to a St. Matthews University and I um, went through all the process to get back. You know, I'm a U.S. citizen, so for some people it may be a little bit different, but I had to take the, uh, get an ECM, ECFMG certified. I had to take the CSA and all that good stuff before it was required for everybody. And so essentially I went to a Caribbean medical school and I got a surgical residency, which is kind of hard to do, so I thought I would tell you how I did that and what I think are the best uh, ways or best schools to go to to enable you to have the best chance at getting a surgical residency. First, I want to tell you a little story and I have a funny, I have a funny story. So this is what can happen in a Caribbean medical school and uh, I'm going to illustrate this uh, for a specific reason. So basically when you go to a Caribbean school, let's talk about this first, is you have, you go there for two years. Okay, you do your all your book work your first year and your second year, and then before you get rotations in the United States, as in your third and fourth year, because those third and fourth years spent in in the hospital, uh, learning, you know, taking care of patients and uh, learning about patients that way instead of in like a you know a classroom setting. So before you're able to be in the hospital and touch patients and all that stuff, most residency or most programs for your rotations require you to take step one. If they don't require you to take to take step one, be very careful because they may not be accredited. You may not get credits for when you're applying to residency. The residency may say well, you don't have uh, the you know credits for, like, say, internal medicine because you did it at this specific hospital, which uh, does not require you assimilate or whatever. So be careful. So, okay, so here's my story. In the end of my second year, my last semester, halfway through the last semester in October at St. Matthew's, which is in Belize, just off the coast of Belize. So there's a lot of hurricanes in the, you know, Caribbean, obviously, and we just happened to get hit with a hurricane. Well, the school has this big hurricane uh, call ladder or whatever they want, call tree, whatever they want to call it, and they're supposed to um, notify everybody before the hurricane shows up so that way we can get off the island, get up, get to the mainland and be safe. Well, it didn't happen. <laughs> we got stuck in this hurricane and so basically the school said, hey everybody, just go get a bunch of food and some water and hunker down for a couple days because this hurricane is coming, it's gonna hit us, we don't know how long it's gonna be. So we're like, okay. So we got a bunch of students together and it ended up basically for one night, there was, we stayed two nights in a, an apartment and we stayed in somebody's apartment we didn't even know. We had to like break into the apartment and all this stuff. It was crazy. So myself and two other students who were girls uh, stayed in this apartment and the winds were like 180 miles an hour. It was ridiculous. And the, the roof of the apartment we were staying at, the next the apartment over actually came off. And so we thought the wind was gonna break the windows in the bedroom. So the bedroom was in the back, the wind was coming from the back. So we took the bed, we put it in the, the living room, and we slept in the living room on that bed. Well, the next morning I get up and I'm like, I gotta take a shit. So I get up and I'm like, oh my God, there's no water, right? All the water's off and it's 150 mile an hour winds outside. I can't go outside. If you look out there, it's like an ocean. There's supposed to be dirt and land and there's nothing. It's only the ocean. So the, the tide rose so much that the we were on the second floor, like the half of the first floor was, was underwater. So I had nowhere to go. I'm like, oh my God. So I went in this person's room. I don't even know who it is to, to this day. Luckily, they had a, a bunch of plastic bags in there that they had kept some just stored stuff in. And I took one of those plastic bags and I took a shit in the plastic bag. And then I had nowhere to put it. So I had to put the toilet paper and the turd in a Ziploc clear plastic bag. And then the girls were sleeping. I had to tiptoe through the bedroom like this and open the window and pray to God one of the girls did not walk in when I have a clear bag of shit in my hands and toss it out the window. And as soon as I toss it out the window, that thing took off like a fucking rocket ship and I never saw it land, I shit you not. So that's one of my stories about being in a Caribbean medical school. It's very important which school you choose 
okay? Not only for to get back into residence in the United States, but the quality of life and if you they get they take care of you while you're there. So that's important. You can't just go to any school because, you know, a lot of these schools unfortunately are just trying to get your money. Like you can get a loan because you say you're going to medical school, you give the money to them, the money's gone. Right? They take the money, they're like, peace out. We don't care if you pass or not. They don't they're not interested really. They're more profit machines. So you have to be careful. But Caribbean schools are a great way for a student who didn't do that great in college or you know had some trouble and turn you know themselves around basically what I did is I did really crappy the first couple years of college I didn't have a direction I didn't really think I was smart enough and then I turned it around and I really got my studying down the last couple of years of school I did really really well I was getting A's I was getting B's B pluses I didn't get C's or D's or anything like, like that which I did the first couple years but when you do that you can't get, um, you know, everybody applying to U.S. schools getting straight A's and all this stuff. So it was a fantastic way for me to get back in the system, and I think it's a fantastic way for people to have a second chance. But you have to be careful when you're doing this. What I did, and what the mistake I made is, <clears throat> I just sent off, like, two applications or one application to a Caribbean medical school, and I said, that's fine, you know, if I get in there, I'll just go. And I did, and I didn't get into any, um, you know, U.S. schools, so I just went to that one. I didn't do any research, like I was an idiot, but, like so stupid, I don't, I can't even believe I did that. What you wanna do is you wanna get a good school, and let me tell you what the good schools are. Number one, I would say is St. George, okay? St. George has been around for a really, really long time, and they've got a good track record with residency programs. This is very important, because the residency programs in the United States knows that St. George produces good students. Second is Ross University. Ross University is also has has been along, around for a long time and they have a really good reputation with uh, residencies <clears throat> in the United States. Those two schools I would say are my top one and two. I think AUC, American University of Caribbean, is probably pretty good too. They have been around a while, they have a fairly good reputation and the students produced out of there are pretty good. Now let me tell you about Ross and um, St. George. The reason that they have a good reputation and that the students that I run into are really, really good is because it's fucking hard, okay? It's a hard-ass school and they don't sh screw around. And if you do shitty the first couple semesters, they don't let you keep going. That's the thing. And so they don't produce, they don't send out shitty students to the United States, okay, into these residencies because they don't want to ruin their reputation and not have those not have that ability to send students to the US uh, residencies. And so when you're going there, you just have to realize like you gotta bring your A game. Like it's no bullshit anymore. In college, you, you know, you can kind of slide by with some C's and B's and stuff like that and maybe do okay. But in med school, it's really not like that anymore. Now you're getting into the stuff that is gonna help you take care of people. Okay, so if you're slacking on that stuff, if you're like not paying attention, if you're really not reading and you're trying to cram for tests and trying to slide by, I mean, that's kind of a shitty what thing to do to other people because eventually that knowledge, right, that you don't know, you're going to be treating people. I mean, we, yeah, we're treating patients, but they're people, man. You know, so you really have to pay attention to that and be like, okay, I got to bring my A game here and I got to like really try my best and know as much as possible. The second reason you gotta do that is because, well, they won't let you finish, okay? They'll just like drop you. If you get shitty grades and stuff, they'll be like, peace out, go back to the first semester again. And you'll do some first semester like four times and then they'll take all the, your money. They don't care, right? And then you'll be out, you'll, you spent all this money, you got this loan, now you have no way to pay it back. The other reason is because you have to take the USMLE. So you have to really pay attention, you have to kick ass in school because if you don't kick ass in school, then you're not gonna do very well in the USMLEs. I mean, the, you're basically, the first two years of school, you're studying, when you're a Caribbean student, you're studying for the USMLE. Like that's your one goal. And you need to crush that USMLE to give you a good chance to get into the uh, United States uh, residency. If you don't do good on, on the USMLEs, it's very, very difficult. I mean, you can do it, but you just put yourself at such a disadvantage. And then you're gonna get a, probably a shitty residency program in the middle of nowhere or in a place that you don't want to be with you know people that you probably don't want to be with I, I think the biggest thing is you know first 
I would go, try and go to one of those two schools, Ross or St. George. And when you get into one of those, you got to bring your fucking A game. And if you're not ready to do that, if you're not committed, then just don't do it. Like maybe it's not for you. Maybe you know your parents want you to do it, but you don't really want to do it. You got to really you know find out why you're doing that like that's very important because you got to have that every day you're studying 8 to 10 hours 12 hours you really need to have that why why am i sitting down and reading and that's that why has to be really really strong if you if it's not strong you're not going to sit there and do it you're going to you're going to do crappy you're not going to do well in the USMLEs, or you're not going to take it or you're not even going to be able to get you know past the first semester in those schools and it's going to be painful and then you're going to have loans that you can't pay back. That's my spiel on Caribbean medical schools. If you guys have any questions, no problem. Put them in the uh, comments below. I'll answer as many as I can. And uh, if you like this stuff, subscribe to my channel. Share it with some friends if you think it'll help them. Um, and I appreciate you guys being here. All right, I'll see you in the next one.